It's a necessary kind, like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama, like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text diploma to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. That's diploma to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve, is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. This is you over 30 years ago. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is your mom when you drive her back from therapy. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Roles change without us noticing. And in your new role, we help you help. AARP gives you the information to help care for your mom so that you can have patience with her just like she did with you. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving or call one 877 333-5885 to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Are we there yet? Remember, visit aarp.org slash caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... Could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. This is the MD's Fantasy Football Show with Dan Mader. 
Thank you, the X's and O's of all things fantasy. <laughs> On the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And welcome in, MD Nation, to the show. You are listening to the MD's Fantasy Football Show. On the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, WWSRN, also presented to you by Belly Up Sports. As always, I'm your host, Dan Mater. We're talking about the Thursday night recap. There's a lot to go over from last night's game, along with the late window matchups for Week 15, our second round of the playoffs. We got things kicked off last night with the Raiders and the Chargers. Of course, to kick off the show, too, we will talk about some injury updates for you guys. I also see some silver lining news here from a, a year that's been crazy. That's so far so good on the injury news front. So far so good on the COVID news front. We had guys like Suckup, uh, Ryan Suckup, the kicker of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, be able to come back today. And uh, they had, they I mean, they lost our whole special teams related to COVID. So they've been able to get back and activated. And there's, for the most part here, we don't have too many, knock on wood, we don't have too many COVID issues yet heading into this week that affect uh, fantasy in a big, impactful way. But I bring that up here to illustrate this next point, which is remember a couple of weeks ago, remember even yet last week, we had Miles Gaskin go down on a Saturday. Now we have two games being played on Saturday this particular week. Make sure you have options. Do not go into your, your fantasy playoff matchups this, this Saturday, this Sunday, this weekend, and think to yourself that i got my lineup. I'm good. I don't need to make any other waiver moves. I don't need to look around to see what else is available. No. Build your lineup. Solidify your lineup with as many fantasy value assets as you possibly can. Even if you have your roster construction set up in a particular way, if you have a couple of roster spots that were maybe handcuffs, because at this point, handcuffs are going to be almost irrelevant. Not, not quite irrelevant until next week, but almost irrelevant. If you have extra defenses, extra quarterbacks, things of that nature, you might want to try to open up some roster spots and give yourself enough fantasy value assets, whatever they may be, whether it's a wide receiver, a running back, a tight end, does not matter, from the waiver wire. And make sure you have options available to you in case what happens a couple of weeks ago or even last week happens again this Saturday where we lose fantasy impactful players on the day before that we thought we were going to have them in our lineups. Do not get content with your roster construction. Make sure you have options. Make sure you have an idea like, hey, you know what? If this guy goes down in this position, what's my backup plan? You have to look at it this way. Otherwise, you're going to get left out the dry possibly if we have another COVID outbreak this Saturday, the day before the game. So that's my big advice to you on this Friday before we head into the weekend, because other than contacting us and following us along on social media at Billy Up MDFF Show, which will always be available to you through that, we're not going to talk to you guys again until next Monday or this upcoming Monday, I should say. When we recap the Sunday afternoon games. So I want to make sure I leave you guys with that advice heading into the weekend. Also, a little tidbit, next week is Christmas, which means this show, Christmas Eve, we'll still, we'll still have our show on Thursday. But next Thursday's show is going to be a full Week 16 preview. So what for many of you might wind up being the last show of the year because if you win your championships, while I hope you'll come back to MD Nation and listen to the MD Sandy Football Show the following week because we will be doing episodes like normal that entire following week up for the Week 17 Amateur Hour Leagues, as I like to call them, the people who actually play their championships in Week 17. We'll still be producing content for those guys. But in case Week 16 is the last time you're going to listen to a fantasy football show in general, until next year or until the summer, whichever. Our entire show is going to be Christmas Eve because we're not going to be we're not going to be doing a show here on Christmas Day. So make sure you check it out next Thursday, 12 to 1 30. We'll see if the time gets flexed out a little bit. We might might see if we can extend it a little. We'll see what happens there. But at least at the very least from 12 to 1 30, we're going to have a full week 16 preview. So just to keep you guys aware about that. All right. Now that we got all that out the way. Let's dive into some of these injury updates from the games that we talked about in yesterday's show. Now, again, every show is available to you on a streaming app, whether it's iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, and also, most importantly, available to you on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network app for Android or WWSRN for iOS. We are always available to you guys. Just look for the MD Fantasy Football Show. So let's talk about some of the games, some of the injury updates that we have coming up. Denver. Off the bat, looks like they're going to have Melvin Gordon. Looks like they're going to have Philip Lindsay. 
looks like they're going to have Noah Fant. So everybody who you're worried about involved for Denver is looks it looks like they're going to be available for you guys. Remember, we talked about Melville Gordon being an RB2 as long as he is good to go because the way he catches the ball, because the way he's been running as of late. So that gets to stay the same here against Buffalo. Now, this is a tougher Buffalo defense than it has been for most of the season. On paper, it's going to look like it's a good matchup for the running back. I think Melvin Gordon will have some tough sledding, but the overall volume and the involvement in the passing game should give him a decent floor in this one with a chance to score. On the other side of the ball against Buffalo, John Brown has been rolled out. So while he returned to practice this week, and we thought maybe there was a chance he would be able to come back, he has been rolled out. That will get updated in the rankings at bellyupfantasysports.com before that game kicks off tomorrow at 4.30. Make sure you're checking out for half point, full point, or even standard scoring. All those rankings are up there for you guys to give you coming some kind of semblance on what we're expecting this weekend coming up in one of the most important weeks of the year. In fact, it's the most important week of the year until next week when we have the championship week. Carolina, we have DJ Moore looking like he's going to be good to go. No surprise here, though. Christian McCaffrey will not. That's not a shock right here. We already talked about Mike Davis being the running back the rest of the way. It doesn't make any sense for them to bring back Christian McCaffrey at all. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones is out, so you're not going to have Julio Jones again this week. Again, he's another player who kind of falls into this mold of a group of guys that we've been talking about that I don't know if it makes any sense to bring him back at all. I don't know why they would at this point. I don't, I don't see it. So I doubt, highly doubt that we will see a Julio Jones again this season. He's just going to get those hamstrings better. But it's going to be an interesting offseason for the Atlanta Falcons to see what happens with Julio Jones and with Matt Ryan. Tampa Bay, we're still waiting on Ronald Jones. We are still leaning towards Ronald Jones not playing. It's hard to gauge because... Not only did he have the, the injury to his pinky, the fracture that he has pins in, but being that he's not going to be eligible to play in practice anyway because of the COVID issue, because the high-risk contact that he got tagged on, now all of a sudden you find himself in a situation where we can't really get an update on Ron Jones until he gets activated off the COVID list, essentially. But because between the surgery, not being able to practice at all this week with the COVID issues, I would lean towards Ronald Jones not being able to go this particular week. I just don't see it. That wouldn't make any sense to me. You keep him out for a week. You're in the playoff hunt. So I will expect to see Leonard Fournette out there and good to go. I will expect to see Leonard Fournette as an RB2 this week. So that's what I expect to see there. Make sure you're firing up Leonard Fournette. Keep Ronald Jones on the bench. I don't think you're going to have him. The Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. Raheem Mostert was able to practice in a limited capacity. Unfortunately, the 49ers, I mean, not unfortunate, but there's been so much news about, you know, George Kittle, them actually opening the practice window for George Kittle, that a lot of the other news that we need to know for an actual, you know, fantasy update, because nobody's playing George Kittle this week, uh, has kind of gone by the wayside a little bit in San Francisco. But it does seem like it we're trending towards a Mostert being available. However, he may be limited. And we already knew that he was going to be limited to some degree by Jeff Wilson because of the committee that they've been showing anyway. But it does seem like Moser is getting less healthy rather than healthier as we head into these weeks. Not what you want to hear playing against the Dallas Cowboys because you're going to, it's going to be hard not to play Raheem Moster as an RB2 in this matchup against the Dallas Cowboys, a matchup the San Francisco 49ers need to have, a matchup Dallas needs to have. And when you know the 49ers running style should be very effective against his defense. So that's going to be the key here. So it's going to be hard to keep Raheem Mostert out, and I'm going to keep him as an RB too because it only takes one play. But him getting more than 15 touches or even two 15 touches is going to be difficult, and that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. So if you feel good on Raheem Mostert on 10 to 12 touches, because that's probably more realistic to where he's going to get, then go ahead and fire him up with confidence. And I'm still going to, like, I still have some confidence in him because he's going to be an RB too. Just takes that one play. And against Dallas, they are not going to match up well with the San Francisco 49er style of running. Dallas has some injury updates in their own right with Ezekiel Elliott. It's, it sounds like Ezekiel Elliott's going to play, but it sounds like he's less healthy this week based on the comments that the coach has been talking about than he was a week ago. And we've, we saw a week ago, he didn't look great against Cincinnati. Now you're going up against the San Francisco 49ers with a legit run defense. I already had him as an RB3 to begin with. I think you have to start to ask your questions 
Do you even play Ezekiel Elliott this week against San Francisco? Is he in your lineup at all? And frankly, I might be moving him further down my rankings as well. I think we're going to see a healthy dose of Tony Pollard in this game. And overall, the running back efficiency might not even be all that efficient because of the matchup. I think there's a real chance here that you are not going to play Ezekiel Elliott, or at least at the very least, he's not going to be a locked in starter for me heading into this week. He already was in as an RB3. I might want to bump him outside of my top 36 on the news that he is getting less healthy as well. Detroit's an interesting one. We had a couple updates throughout the day on those. With Detroit, we had some issues of, you know, we knew Stafford was going to practice this week. So hearing Stafford's not going to practice is, is really neither here nor there when it came to when we're trying to figure out, is he going to be available? He is traveling with the team to Tennessee. He would not be doing that now if he did not have a decent chance to play. Because he could travel, he could travel separately. He, if he doesn't travel at all, then it opens up the door like, all right, well, are you going to bother? But he can travel separately with a guy who hasn't really been in the locker room, hasn't been on the practice field with all the COVID protocols and everything like that. He doesn't need to travel with the team, and yet he is. In my mind, that means he's got a pretty decent shot of suiting up on Sunday. If he does, he is a quarterback streaming option against a Tennessee team in a game in which could very well be high scoring. And that'll affect Marvin Jones as well. Let's see what he's able to do. I think Marvin Jones could be a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three if Stafford plays in this game. And I talked about Tennessee side of the ball too yesterday when I think it boosts everybody involved there. So make sure you go back and listen to that episode. But Matthew Stafford, I, I lean towards Stafford's going to wind up suiting up and playing. That's what I'm leaning towards based on the news that he is traveling with the team to Tennessee today. Now, Kenny Galladay, on the other hand, we knew he was going to play. We also know in this show, we talked about it, that there doesn't make any sense for him to actually play at all this again this year. But it sounds like Bevel this morning finally came out and acknowledged that the conversation of just officially shutting Kenny Galladay down for the rest of the season should be a conversation that needs to be had at this point. So that's going to pretty much give us the clarity that Kenny Galladay's done for the year if you were somehow holding out hope for your championship weeks, which I don't think many people were at this point, but it sounds like we're going to get that confirmation soon. David Johnson returned to practice for Houston Texans, so he should be good to go. Brandon Cooks has been limited in practice all week. He's expected to be good to go as well for the Houston Colts game. The Dolphins are another interesting one. They have, uh, I don't know what's going on in the uh, Dolphins locker room, but they must have some magical waters in there or something because all of a sudden, Mike Isicki's out there practicing. Devontae Parker's out there practicing. Jakeem Grant's out there practicing. When we started off this week, we didn't think any of these guys were going to be able to even have a chance to play this week. We didn't think anybody was going to be able to practice this week. All these guys have been out there. Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant have been limited all week long. And now Mike Isicki got out there today, apparently, and was catching footballs. I don't know how for any of them because they were all pretty brutal injuries last week all listed at week to week coming out of Sunday. And yeah, it seems like all these guys might be able to play. So a lot of roster ranking adjustments are going to have to happen here. A lot of ranking adjustments on my part, because I didn't have Parker or Mike Kosicki playing in this game. I didn't have him ranked. So a lot of things are going to have to change and get updated there as well. Keep your eyes out for that. I mean, if they play, Mike Kosicki is a streaming tight end who's hovering around that top 12 territory, especially the way he's been utilized in the red zone with Tua Tagovailoa. Devontae Parker, I may not want to play him regardless whether he plays or not. One, being limited to Stephon Gilmore and the three, rookie quarterback versus Bill Belichick. We're not exactly sure how that's going to go. Not to mention, while Parker's target share has still led the way for the team, hasn't been great. His production has not been great since Tua has taken over. He doesn't get those deep field shots as much as he does anymore. He doesn't get those opportunities, those 50-50 balls. He doesn't get that with Tua. So I don't know if I've been playing Devontae Parker regardless whether he suits up or not, but it's just an interesting note that all of a sudden all these guys seem like they're going to find a way to play against the New England Patriots this week. Washington's another one. Washington-Seattle. We got Alex Smith matchup. 
He's not practicing, but they seem have they have been pretty consistent all week long on the idea that while they are going to make sure they take it easy on Alex Smith, they fully anticipate having him this week. From from what I can tell. So I do believe Alex Smith will play. And I do believe that you will be able to build your fantasy lineups based off of that. What do we have next? Baltimore Ravens. We're waiting. We're still waiting to see about Marquise Brown. Now, I'm, from what I understand, he has been testing negative. So he should, he should actually be able to be eligible to be cleared for this game. Now, obviously Marquise Brown is that one hit wonder. Not much else, but he's that one hit wonder that you can take that boomer bust option on if you need it in your lineups. But we'll see what's able to happen from there. And I think that's it for the, no, uh, one last one for you guys. No, that's in the games that we'll talk about. So I think that's it for the injury updates from the games that we talked about in yesterday's show. So make sure you go ahead, go back, listen to that, or watch it on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Make sure you check that out for the rest of the early window of games tomorrow and 1 o'clock. Remember, we got two Saturday games tomorrow. So now we can go ahead and dive into Thursday's football game. We can dive into the Chargers. We can dive into the Raiders. And we had a lot to talk about. Marcus Mariota pretty much had to come in after the first quarter and played the majority of this game. And you know what? He played well. He did play well. Now, ultimately, yes, the Chargers wound up winning this game in overtime, 30-27. to 27. But it wasn't because of Marcus Mariota. He came in 17-28, to 28, 226 yards, had a touchdown, had an interception, used his legs 88 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Before you even ask me the question, yes, Marcus Mariota will be a streaming option next week. Now, I know this game may have knocked out any chance the Raiders had of making the playoffs, and that's going to be interesting to watch when it comes to Josh Jacobs. Now, they gave Jacobs the ball a lot in this game. He ran the ball 26 times, only 76 yards. He did get the rushing touchdown, and he also tacked on three receptions for 38 yards on three targets. However, he picks up a knee injury during the game. Now, he was able to play through it, and they still fed him the ball. But if you're going to be out of the playoffs, Josh Jacobs has been dealing with injuries quite a bit. Just next week will be very interesting. The one thing that bodes well for fantasy owners who wind up in the championship and have Josh Jacobs, the one thing that bodes well for you is that at least he will have a 10-day period off after doing the Thursday game. So I do think there's a decent chance here that Josh Jacobs will be able to still be available to you guys for your championship weeks. And he winds up with a solid game here to kick things off. Now, the big winner of the day, of course, was Darren Waller. Nine catches, 150 yards, a touchdown. Clearly the favorite target of Marcus Mariota. He had 12 targets on the day. Nelson Aguilar, again, had the targets in this one. Eight targets. Only four catches for 49 yards, though. He didn't get that big play, which is kind of what he's been dependent upon in order to have those big fantasy returns. But again, another game in which Nelson Aguilar shows you he has a little bit of a floor. So he's not as boomer bust as he used to be. He still leads the way in targets. Hunter Renfro went down with an injury during this game. They didn't have uh, Henry Ruggs available in this one to start with. So pretty, it pretty much boiled down to you had Darren Waller, you had Nelson Aguilar, and you had Josh Jacobs on the ground. They tried to utilize that. The offensive line didn't play great in this game for the Raiders. But dear Lord, could you make it any more obvious when you were going to run the ball to Josh Jacobs? And when you did run the ball with Josh Jacobs, is he allowed to run to any other gap besides the A or B gap? No stretch runs. Only two tosses. Both went for losses of four or five yards, I believe. Everything they did was just smack into the middle behind the center. Smack into the middle behind the center. And the Chargers were sitting there with eight, nine guys in the boxes waiting for it every single time. Every single time. So that's where it's been tough. Now, on the Chargers side of things, Justin Herbert, if you stuck with him, he came through for you for a decent day. Not a huge day, but a decent day. 314 yards. Two touchdowns, 
and a rushing touchdown. That's the start. That's the kind of start you want out of your quarterback in your fantasy football playoff matchups. Now I had Justin Herbert ranked at QB 13. I didn't have him as a must start because we didn't know what we we're going to have out of a Keenan Allen, out of a Mike Williams heading into the matchup. And you know what? We didn't have much out of them at all. We did not have much out of them at all. Keenan Allen, one catch, 17 yards and three targets. Now he was out there throughout the game, but it was clear he was there to be more of a decoy than anything else. I mean, it was, it was Jalen Guyton who had four receptions for 91 yards and six targets. It was Hunter Henry who had five catches for 65 yards and a touchdown in this game. And then Tyron Johnson, who wound up coming through as a sleeper after all, even though both Keaton Allen and Mike Williams were activated, three catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown. He was able to spread the ball out to everybody. He almost looked like a more complete quarterback, realizing he didn't have to throw the ball to Keenan Allen all the time. Kind of interesting how that works out sometimes. Now, this is a Raiders defense with no Jonathan Abram that had no answer for the pass all night long. Anytime Justin Herbert dropped back to pass, he had all day long to decide where he wanted to go with the ball and guys coming wide open all over the place. So things are going to look a little bit better against defenses like this to begin with. But if you stuck with Justin Herbert, you were rewarded. Austin Eckler, 13 carries, 60 yards. Didn't do anything. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say he didn't do anything. Didn't do much in the receiving game. Only four catches, 19 yards on four targets. But the four targets is what shocks me. It was a back and forth game. Justin Herbert was throwing the ball well. Keenan Allen is a decoy. Mike Williams is a decoy. I thought for sure of nothing else. We knew Hunter Henry would probably get his, but I thought for sure of nothing else, Austin Eckler would be targeted a ton because he has been anyway. They didn't do that in this game. So if you're Eckler owner, you won't look pretty disappointed. Pretty much if you stuck with Justin Herbert, you were rewarded because other than being a Hunter Henry owner and streaming him, none of the charges that you depended upon to get you to this point really came through for you in this one. And hopefully you'll be able to survive it. But Keenan Allen getting one reception for 17 yards if you played him against the Raiders, that's going to be difficult to do. And I still had him ranked. I dropped him down the rankings before that game happened. I saw him ranked as a wide receiver, too, though. Like, it's Keenan Allen. He's going to be active against the Raiders. You have to play him. You can't blame yourself. That's one of those that if you ultimately wind up losing this week, you can't blame yourself because of it. You just can't. So what we're going to do before we dive into the late window of games, we're going to take a quick break. Come back on the other side. We got all the late window matchups to talk to you guys about and a mailbag segment. So everybody, please stay tuned right after these messages on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, WWSRN. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all-around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind, like season-ending injuries. There's the necessary kind, like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama, like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text DIPLOMA to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. That's DIPLOMA to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. It's now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. 
For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. This is you over 30 years ago. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is your mom when you drive her back from therapy. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Roles change without us noticing. And in your new role, we help you help. AARP gives you the information to help care for your mom so that you can have patience with her just like she did with you. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving or call 1-877-333-5885 to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Are we there yet? Remember, visit aarp.org slash caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're listening to the MD's Fantasy Football Show on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And welcome back, MD Nation, to the show. You are listening to the MD's Fantasy Football Show on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, WWSRN, also presented to you by Belly Up Sports. As always, I'm your host, Dan Mater. We just got done talking about last night's game, recapping that and getting you all up to date on the injury updates from yesterday's show, which you can go back and watch or listen to on your favorite streaming app. Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you like to go. The MD's Fantasy Football Show is widely available to you guys wherever you like. And, of course, on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network up on Android and WWSRN on iOS. So now let's go ahead and dive into our late window games that we had to talk about in today's show. Kicking it off with the Jets and the Rams. We just got some news before the show really started, actually, that James Crowder was able to practice on a limited capacity, still has the calf issue, sounds like he'll be able to play, will be listed as questionable heading into the weekend, and this is how much I care for fantasy football purposes. No. You're not playing a New York Jet against the Rams with the defense that they've been playing with as of late, which has been a top-notch defense, an elite defense. Not with Sam Darnold, scrubby Sam Darnold, scrubby Adam Gase. There's not a fantasy relevant player because even the running back situation, Adam Gase is like, yeah, yeah, we'll have a four man rotation of a bunch of bums and practice squad guys. Why not? Nothing on the Jets is worth your time. But what you can do is play against them. Rams defense, one of the top defenses you could possibly have for fantasy football purposes this particular week. You can Jared Goff. Is QB 10 for me. He's a guy you can consider streaming and being a top 12 quarterback for you this week. Cam Akers is an RB1 in my rankings. I have an RB6 overall. Cooper Cup, wide receiver 17. Robert Woods, wide receiver 14. High end wide receiver twos. The only thing you can't really play is the tight end situation because they just haven't been very involved consistently regardless of their opponent. The only thing I'm worried about from your Rams fantasy relevant players in this week's matchup is game script. That's it. That's the only thing I would be considered. I was the only thing I'd be concerned about. I wouldn't be concerned about anything else. Could the Rams just flat out decide that they are going to win this game, dominate this game with Cam Akers and the defense? kind of like what they did last week to the New England Patriots. Is that a possibility that something similar to that nature could happen? The answer is yes. The answer is unequivocally yes. So that's going to be the one concern you have when it comes to Jared Goff, when it comes to Cooper Cup, when it comes to Robert Woods, because you're going to want to play these guys against the Jets. You You know how horrendous the Jets are against the passing attack. The Rams have looked pretty solid over the past few weeks in that, right? Sean McVay has them going more up-tempo, which has been helping out Jared Goff, has been helping out the volume of a Cooper Cup and a Robert Woods. But the issue here becomes, are they just going to win it through their game script, through their defense, through their running game? That's the only concern I have when it comes to a Cooper Cup, a Robert Woods, and a Jared Goff. Otherwise, you have to play these guys. 
or Jared Goff's case, he's at least in the conversation if you're looking at the streaming quarterbacks available to you this week. But that's why Cam Akers is an RB1 because he's the one guy I'm looking at is I don't care how this game script goes, whether the Rams are ahead, whether it's close, whatever the case may be, Cam Akers is going to be allowed to run because he would finally have clarity in this backfield of who the guy is. After last week, there's no, there's no question mark about it. There is no rotation. It's Cam Akers. And if Sean McVay were to go this Sunday and decide to rotate this back into a, a committee backfield, then I, you guys all have permission for me to throw eggs at him <laughs> at the press conference because that just can't happen at this point. There's no way. I'd be willing to bet whatever amount of money that you want to bet on that Cam Akers is going to be hands down the lead guy heading into this week's matchup. That's how confident we are now finally at this point. And that's a good thing because now you know what to count on. So let's move off this game because it's pretty straightforward and what you're going to be doing from a fantasy standpoint. Let's talk about a game that might be a little bit more cloudy, might be a little bit more interesting. That's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Arizona Cardinals. Jalen Hurts is QB 16 for me. So he's in the streaming conversation, depending on what your options are available to you. And it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's because of his legs. I wasn't really overly impressed with him throwing the football last week. But there was two things coming out of last week. One, the Eagles offense definitely looked a lot better with the game plan that they built around Jalen Hurts. And two, they building that game plan around Jalen Hurts using his legs to open things up. I mean, he ran for over 100 yards. He's going to use his legs. He's going to run for a lot again this game against the Arizona Cardinals. That will it be for 100 yards. I'm not so sure. But will he have a high floor because of his scrambling ability? 100%. 100%. He'll be able to hit the tight ends, like a Dallas Goddard, a Zach Ertz. Miles Sanders all of a sudden is popping back up on people's radars as a guy who could be a championship winner if we get to see what he did against the Saints last week continue with Jalen Hurts as a starting quarterback position. Now, the one thing I will say about last week, he still only had 14 carries, but he busted the big play. That's something that's not really super sustainable. What I want to see is I want to see Miles Sanders getting 18 carries plus four receptions plus. I want to see him getting 20 touches total because that's what he should be doing. That's what he's supposed to be doing. And if you have Jalen Hurts' legs, well, now the bad offensive line isn't as bad for Miles Sanders because now all of a sudden there's going to be holes. There's going to be opportunities available at the snap that weren't there with Carson Wentz. So Miles Sanders becomes very interesting. He's RB16 for me this week. While it's not a great matchup on paper, it's also nothing that scares you. I'm not scared of the Arizona run defense. So as long as they continue to use those RPO actions, I do believe Miles Sanders can be a very solid RB2 with some upside because he's hit a big play a couple times this season, including last week with Jalen Hurts. It might be there. Still can't touch the wide receivers for the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, like I said, still not overly impressed by Jalen Hurts throwing the football. This is a decent secondary for the Arizona Cardinals. And nobody has really been the guy. We had a, we had a month stretch there of Travis Fulgham really kind of leading the way with all the targets. And that, mm, that really hasn't been there since. It really hasn't. It's been spread out between Greg Ward and Jalen Rager and Travis Fulgham and now Alshon Jeffrey trying to get his work, his work back into the mix. He had a touchdown last week. It was only a reception of the day, but he had a touchdown last week. Rager's not even really getting hit down the field. Jalen Hurts is not a big arm guy. So you're not touching any of these wide receivers. Now the tight ends, on the other hand, obviously in the conversation, continue to play Dallas Goddard as the number one tight end, not just for the Philadelphia Eagles, but as a top 12 tight end in your fantasy football lineups. I know he didn't have a huge stat line last week or anything like that, but he still had the most targets in front of Zach Ertz. There's still definitely a comfortability there. And I do believe that the security blanket, when Jalen Hurts is looking to throw the football to, to move the chains, it's going to be Dallas Goddard. So I do think you can still play him as a tight end 11 because this offense, I believe, will now be more focused around Jalen Hurts using his legs. I do worry a little bit about overall passing volume. But that's where we get into the other side of the ball with the Arizona Cardinals and what are they going to be able to do offensively? Kyler Murray is my QB 11. 
Now that means he's just inside the top 12 means he's still just a QB one, but man, oh man, he's not playing well. And this Eagles defense is decent. Now I don't know if they're going to have Darius Slay in this game and that will affect things. That'll be, it'll make it easier for Murray to be able to get the ball to DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins, who returned to practice today, along with Chase Edmonds. They had not been in practice for most of the week up until this point, but they are going to practice today and are both expected to play. So nothing to be concerned about there. And if there is no Darius Slade, then Hopkins should have a really nice time. And even if there is, because Slade has been so banged up, he hasn't even really been a shutdown corner for these top wide receivers over the past few weeks anyway. So I like Hopkins in this game quite a bit because they have definitely made a recommitment to getting Hopkins the ball to getting him the targets that for some inexplicable reason, after Murray hurt his shoulder, they just weren't getting it to him. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. The squeaky wheel got the grease in DeAndre Hopkins' situation. So he's going to be good to go. I have him at wide receiver 10. So I have him right there at the wide receiver one position. Kenyon Drake, even though this is a tough matchup, You have Chase Edmonds, who will be active, but maybe not 100%. And again, with the way Murray has been playing as of late, it seems like he's trying to be more conservative with his body, which is taking away from his play overall, and it's killing Kyler Murray fantasy owners, but it is opening up the door for extra opportunities for Kenyon Drake, especially when they get down the goal line. It's not Kyler Murray automatically vulturing his touchdowns off the read option. More times than not now, he's sitting back, and he's letting Drake take the punishment. And that's getting his overall touches back up. And he's been finding the end zone. He's been scoring. He's been allowed to get those goal line carries. They haven't been getting ripped away from him. I don't know. Kyler Murray's still not 100% yet. I mean, that's something we're not going to know. It doesn't, it's not going to come up in the practice reports. They're going to tell you that he's healthy. All I can tell you is that he's not playing the same way that he was earlier on in the season. And it all happened from the shoulder injury. Now, an AC joint typically speaking, takes about three weeks, which means he would be coming at the end of that timeline. Now, I don't know how it extends when you continue to play on it. I don't know how much longer it takes to recover as a result of that. But that's to me, is the key. If he feels like he can't fire it down the field the way that he wants to, it seems like he's just, in general, trying to take less punishment right now. And it's affecting how much he runs. It's affecting how much he throws, how effectively he throws, down the field that he throws. I will say last week, they did seem to want to get an idea going again where they know that they have to get Kyler Murray using his legs again because they're just not the same offense. He's not the same player. Do you have to play Kyler Murray if he's been your quarterback who got you here? Yeah, I think so. It's fantasy football. As long as he's going to use his legs again, that's why I bring that up because that's a silver lining there. If he's going to get back to using his legs at least again, then you'll have a good fantasy quarterback. I'm not going to bench him in my week 15, you know, playoff matchups when I'm one game away from going to the championship. That's that, but my, my concern is his, his ceiling is not nearly as high as it was earlier on in the season because he's not adding the rushing with the passing anymore. 240 yards and a touchdown, I think is about what you're hoping for out of Colin Murray when he throws the ball now. Maybe two touchdowns. You got to get him back to using his legs. Hopefully we see that in this game. Let's move on now. Let's talk about Kansas City and the Saints. Let's talk about what's probably going to wind up being the game of the week, although last night's game was pretty good. Patrick Mahomes, QB1. Travis Kelsey, tight end one. No surprises there. The one that might be a little bit of a surprise for people is Tyreek Hill is my wide receiver one. Not a huge surprise. But given the way Devontae Adams has played and the Saints might be the best defense that the Kansas City Chiefs have faced this season. I know some people will say, like, well, talent-wise, on paper-wise, Baltimore Ravens might have been. But I think we're starting to see some cracks in that Ravens secondary where you, if you have the proper amount of speed, they can't match up. Now, I don't know if any defense can match up with Kansas City speed in general. But this game being in New Orleans with this defense that does have a lot of options that corner, does have more speed than that Ravens team does, I do think it'll be an interesting matchup. This might be the toughest defense they faced. Not that that means it's going to help hold them in check. Not that it doesn't mean that I'm still not ranking these guys all at number ones at their position because that's what they deserve to be. And it doesn't really matter who they play at this point. But maybe, maybe, maybe the Saints defense has a 
little bit of a chance to hold these guys in check to some degree. I think the real question is, are you going to play CEH? And my answer to that is yes. He's in my RB3. now, So it's not a huge thing that we're talking about here. And I, I get that part of it. But he got more involved in the passing game last week. And while the Saints are not a good matchup for running the football against, generally speaking, unless you're the Philadelphia Eagles last week, you can throw the ball to the running back coming out of the backfield. You can take advantage of their linebackers sometimes in those situations. And as long as he gets back involved being, you know, a receiving back, which is probably his best attribute, really, they have a nice floor. So I think you can play... I then play Clyde Edwards Hilaire from that standpoint. I'm having a few technical difficulties. We're going to have to take a quick break before we jump into the Saints and the rest of the moves here. Please stay tuned with us right after this. We'll try to get the bugs worked out for you guys on the other side. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show holder of five, and all around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all the drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind of season ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And really drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishdiploma.org. Or text diploma to 97779. Method rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. That's diploma to 9779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Fund and the Ed Council. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Otter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Mm, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take. Going to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, sink, boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. This is you over th- years ago. Are we there yet? And this is your mom, ever back from therapy. Are we there yet? Are we there? Are we there yet? Roles change with blessing. And in your new role, we help you help. AARP gives you the info to help care for your mom so that you can have patience with her, just like she did with you. AARP.org slash caregiving or call 1 877 335 to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Are we there yet? Remember, visit AARP.org slash caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP Council. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're listening to the MD's Fantasy Football Show on the Sports Radio Network. All right, MD Nation, we are back. You are listening to the MD's Fantasy Football on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, WWSRN, also presented to you by Best Sports. As always, I'm your host, Dan Mater. I think we got the issues kinked out now, uh, up and live and everything on there. So we're just going to kind of power through here. Not really sure what's going on on my end, but... As long as you guys can listen to me, as long as you guys can see me, then we are good. And we can start 
steam ahead right now with New Orleans Saints and the rest of the late window games we have to talk about. We still have a mailbag segment for you guys. A lot more content still ready to go for you guys in the show. So we're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, everybody's straight there. Clyde Woods is the only one who's kind of in question with a tough matchup. I don't expect him to be very efficient on the ground, but at the end of the day, still expect him to be an RB3 because they finally got back to getting him more involved in the passing game. And here, he was operating well ahead of Le'Veon Bell last week. That's something that I think they should continue in the offensive unit. On the Saints side of things, we've had some interesting breaks in this one. So now we still have Taysom Hill ranked as a starting quarterback, but that's going to have to change because moments before the show, it sounds like Drew Brees got officially cleared from doctors to play in week 15. And from all reports that everything went very, very well throughout practice this week, they are confident being able to play him this week against Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, when this week first started out, it sounded like they were going to operate more on the cautious side and maybe wait one more week before actually bringing back Drew Brees. They let the door open. They were going to see if he was, was he going to be able to get through practice, get through throwing without having pain, and they were going to kind of base it off of that. And after the doctors cleared him today, and he's been practicing in full. Well, Mr. Bruce is going to be the starting quarterback, not Taysom Hill. So that's something that's going to get updated in our rankings. As far as where Bruce is, does he have the ceiling of a Taysom Hill? No, because he doesn't have the rushing ability. But in which they're going to have to put up points. They're going to have to put up points against Kansas City. Doubt about that. Drew Brees is going to get utilized. I mean, not that he wouldn't get you. Drew, Drew Brees is going to have to be aggressive. Let's put it that way. He's going to have to be aggressive. So Drew Brees is going to be a top 10 quarterback for me for fantasy football purposes because they're going to put up points. Alvin Kamara owners, rejoice. Rejoice if Drew Brees is back in the line. Can you say double-digit targets? Michael Thomas, while we're expecting him to play, did not practice Wednesday. Did not practice yesterday. So you might have a Michael Thomas who's not 100% now on top of Drew Brees coming back. That should mean double-digit targets for Alvin Kamara. That means Kamara, I might even move him up a little bit higher. I have him already at RB5 on the week, anticipating they were going to have to utilize him well ahead of Latavius Murray. My idea originally, you know, when I was rankings with the assumption that Taysom Hill was going to be the guy, was that, they were going to use Kamara ahead of Latavius Murray as far as a runner goes. And he would have to get more work passing game. We saw last week he got seven targets. That's the most targets he had since Taysom Hill had taken over. And the game script of that of that and why that happened. And it should be a similar game script here against Kansas City. Have to score. 